I am passionate about creating and making, as you might know if you follow Maker's Muse here on YouTube. But when I mention the fact that, you know, I have a workshop and I build things, I create objects and designs and products, people often say, wow, I wish I could do that, but I don't have the money, I don't have the space, I don't have the time. And I actually made a video years ago about my small compact workshop under my parents' house and how I got around that problem. Well, a couple of days ago, the new Xbox gaming console launched for $499. And that got me thinking, if people are buying a gaming console for $499 for their kids, how far could that money go in creating a makerspace for those kids instead? Well, let me introduce you to the $499 makerspace project. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So this is going to be a five part series on creating a budget makerspace. I'm talking a $500 US or less to create a makerspace with everything someone will need to get up and running in 3D design, 3D printing, electronics and more. And it's gonna be split up into five different episodes. The first one is going to be focusing on 3D printing. And you know, you might be asking, okay, does a makerspace really need a 3D printer? Well, my experience it's the gateway into allowing people to realize that they are capable of creating things. It's easy to run a 3D printer and create a 3D object and it's very empowering. Whereas other equipment and tools can be a bit more daunting. So we're gonna focus on 3D printers for this first episode. Then we're gonna talk about tools in episode two. What are the basic tools you need to set up a makerspace in my opinion. Then we're going to talk about how to get a cheap computer. You know, get a computer for free or very low money, low cost. This thing here cost me absolutely nothing. Someone threw it away and it runs all the three design software I need like Fusion 360 and Mesh Mixer, perfectly fine. Then in episode four, we're going to go through setting up a makerspace. What safety considerations do you need? How should you arrange it? And where you could even get furniture for free or cheap to use for your, your sacrificial workbenches. And then finally in episode five, we're gonna go through an example project using all the equipment we've, we've acquired for our budget makerspace. So without further ado, let's launch into this first episode of the $500 makerspace with what 3D printers I recommend on a very strict budget. Starting with the cheapest, the Tronxy or TronXY X1. This little thing's been printing here right next to me and I've had this one since January. Bought it from Gearbest and it is an absolute beast for the price. How much you might be asking? Well, you can pick these up depending on what sales going on for about $120, $130 USD delivered. It doesn't have a heated print bed, but it does have a fairly reasonable print surface of 150 by 150 by 150 millimeters and it runs PLA through a Bowden extruder. It's not a bad machine and honestly, you could definitely get up and running with a 3D printer like this for your kids makerspace, for a budget makerspace. And a good thing about this machine is it's a kit so you can learn a lot about electronics while you assemble it. It does take a bit of experience and a bit of patience to put it together, but one, something that I really do appreciate is there's no dangerous aspects to it. There's no mains wiring or anything like that that you might see in other low cost kits. So it is safe for a kid to assemble, especially, or I would actually recommend with adult supervision. Another thing that you do need to consider with a makerspace is how noisy the machine is. And as you can tell with the Tronxy X1 printing, it's pretty quiet. Um, it's one of the quietest printers I actually own and it's just, just chugging along there, doing its own thing. So that's really good if you have a small studio where there's you know people around with 3D printers running, you don't wanna disturb them. So a quiet 3D printer is actually pretty important. So that's the cheapest 3D printer in our lineup. If you have a strict budget and you do need to get everything from scratch to fit it under the $500 limit, but let's move up to something a little bit better. So if the idea of assembling a kit doesn't really sit well with you, you'd rather a machine that just prints pretty much out of the box, then the Cetus from Cetus 3D is for you. It's pretty much the simplest ready to run machine at a decent price point that I've come across. It has simple to use software and it's really, really good for beginners or a school environment. So if you're a seasoned 3D printer, you will be frustrated with the fact that the Cetus uses proprietary software. And although you can put G code into it from other slices now, it's not that great, but I've been testing the Cetus since it was on Kickstarter with my pre-production unit last year, but now I have the Cetus Mark II, which is their latest version. It's a very stripped back, 
basic looking machine but has a decent print volume of 180, 180 by 170 millimeters in the Z height. So you can actually print pretty big things albeit in PLA plastic only, because it doesn't have a heated bed. You can get a heated bed upgrade, but that's not something I would personally recommend for a budget makerspace, especially around children. It just adds another aspect that, that might be dangerous. I recommend just printing in PLA plastic. The print quality off the Cetus is absolutely astronomical. They've changed a lot of things in the version two, the Mark II. Uh, one, of the, one of my biggest complaints with the Mark I was it couldn't print some types of PLA plastics like polyalchemy, for example, or high PHA mixes, or for example, the high temperature PLAs from, from Protopasta, but this printed just absolutely beautifully. It's loaded up with polyalchemy at the moment, actually. And in terms of tolerances, this is my tolerance gauge test, and it gets down to 0.2 with absolutely no issues. Where is the 0.2? There we go, no issues at all. You probably could get down to 0.15 if you change to the smaller nozzle they provide and print really slowly. So I do highly recommend the Cetus, for beginners in 3D printing who just want a 3D printer to print stuff and don't have to worry about, you know, maintaining it and building it from a kit, which you would with a Tronx CX-1. And something I do find quite interesting is it's Wi-Fi, so you don't need to just load an SD card into it. It's actually USB or Wi-Fi and actually has a phone app as well for iOS. So you can use your phone, if you have an, if you have an iPhone, to actually send prints to it which is pretty neat. The Cetus is priced at $299, so it's a bit of a step up from the Tronx CX-1, but as I said, you do get a pretty much ready to run machine out of the box with Wi-Fi capability and phenomenal print quality. Whereas the Tronx CX-1 will require a bit of work to get good prints off it. It's very, very basic, doesn't have a part cooling fan out of the box and does require a bit of work. But if you're a tinkerer, then that might definitely be worth it too. Anyway, so that's the Cetus from Cetus 3D. There is an extended version if you want extended Z height. Again, I'm not exactly sure that's worth it for our budget makerspace. So let's move on to the big daddy of the lineup. Yes, I know what some of you guys are saying. Angus, you said you would never review a CR10. And that's true, I am not doing review on this 3D printer. That doesn't deny the fact that it's become one of the most popular brands of 3D printer in the past year, like it's become absolutely insanely popular and that's for a good reason. This CR10 Mini that I've been testing for the past week produces phenomenal prints and I kind of hate saying that. It's super impressive to see that there's no 3D printed parts, it's all injection molded or sheet metal or aluminium extrusions with high quality rollers. It does come flat packed, you do have to put a few screws in, but that's like nothing. So this machine to me, feels like how the Wanhao i3 sort of should have evolved. You know, the Wanhao i3 was my first printer that wasn't an up, and it sort of introduced me to the world of open, open modifications, G-code, that sort of thing. And that, those machines became more and more refined in that design, but they became more expensive as well. Whereas this is simplified, but still really rigid, and produces huge prints. I mean, the, the mini version produces prints that are 300 by 220 by 300 millimeters high if you want to, and it has sleeving on the cables. It's ridiculous. I chucked my lattice torture cube at it and it produced that at 75% scale. Um, and even like the default cat G-code it came on with printed flawlessly. Uh, a few things about this machine though, it does have a few flaws, it is cheap and the, the, it comes with like tape for the bed, painter's tape, chuck that away. I'm just using glue onto the glass directly. And these clips here on the side, they do tend to hit the nozzle. It's like Murphy's Law, no matter, no matter where you put them, they do hit the nozzle. So be careful of where you put these. You don't need too many, but you do need to hold the glass plate in place. So keep that in mind. So if you have a bit of a bigger budget, then you might want to shoot for something like this. I can honestly say that you're not going to be disappointed with this machine. And yes, it does come straight from China. Yes, warranty will be an issue, but there's a massive community around these machines. And Gearbest did ask me to say that there is a coupon code for their 11th of the 11th sale, which is ridiculously huge right now. And the price drops from 350 to $330 US for that. It's kind of nuts. So anyway guys, the links for these 3D printers will be down below. Some of them are affiliate links if they're with Gearbest. By all means, if you don't want to use them, then uh, you, can, you can just go to Gearbest directly. Or if you want to support other creators, I'll put a few links of some reviews in the, in the description. You can go use their links. Totally up to you guys. This whole video series is about empowering creativity and proving that you can make a budget maker space 
for the same price or lower than a gaming console. Because if a parent's gonna buy a kid a gaming console and to play games, then to be honest, why not just buy them the tools to create things? Because I am all about empowering creativity. And yes, I love playing computer games, but it's a really easy way to waste your time as a child. They don't realize how much time they're wasting playing games when they could be using it to empower themselves, learn new, new skills, and those skills will be useful later on in life. So guys, I look forward to seeing you again very soon in the second video of this series where we're gonna talk about the tools you need around your 3D printers. You know, choose a 3D printer, it doesn't have to be one of these ones, and then we're gonna talk about the tools that you need to supplement that, screwdrivers, pliers, scrapers, cordless drills, all these sort of things. If you found this video useful, guys, please be sure to subscribe. It really does help me out a huge amount, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.